All right, we're getting close. On Sunday, February 18th, Tesla gave me a text and updated the app to let me complete the last steps so I can then take delivery of the vehicle. What I had to do is I had to go online and finish paying for the vehicle and then provide proof of insurance. I ended up getting a couple different quotes, a few different quotes from different carriers. If you're more interested in what the actual prices were, just skip to like the next chapter. I'll have a, a link down to the chapters below. Uh, for those of you that are in insurance or care about some of the specifics, the quotes that I was getting for was going to be the same coverages I have on my current vehicle. Uh, I was just going to change a couple of things on the first party coverages. So for liability coverage, I was comparing apples to apples. I was doing uh, BI coverage of 250000 per person, 500000 per accident, and then property damage coverage of 100000 When it came to the coverages for the vehicle, I was choosing a little bit higher deductible. I wanted to get a collision and comp both at a thousand dollar deductible. Uh, one important part is the comprehensive coverage. I wanted the glass waiver. I live out in Arizona. That's kind of a necessity. So those were kind of the ground rules. Uh, no rental, no ERS, no mechanical breakdown coverage. Uh, the only other thing was med pay coverage of up to five thousand dollars. For those of you in the business, you kind of understand the reason for that. Uh, if you know, you know, it's uh, double dipping in case I ever need to use that coverage. It's definitely a coverage that I think anybody in Arizona should have chance that they ever need it. So I first started with checking Tesla's coverage. Uh, Tesla's insurance wasn't something I was intending to get, uh, but I wanted to see what the price was anyway. I had an anticipation, a gut feeling, if you will, that it was going to be a little bit out of my reach. And wow, uh, it it was quite high. It ended up being a quote for about $5,000 a year, which is 417 a month. That was insane. I did a, a couple different changes to the quotes just to kind of see what the prices are. Tesla's website, like a lot of insurance carriers, don't break down the coverages very well, whether that's due to them thinking customers don't want it, don't care. There's probably a little bit of fact to that or they just want to obscure it and kind of hide what the prices of each individual coverages are. There could be some of that too. Uh, when I removed just the glass waiver on the comprehensive alone, that was a $40 a month. So that's 10% of the Tesla insurance charge was just having that glass coverage, which basically in the case of a damaged windshield or other safety glass components in the vehicle, if that ever needs to get replaced, the deductible of $1,000 doesn't apply. You actually have a $0 deductible in those circumstances. Obviously the Model X has a very large windshield and I have, my understanding is that's probably very expensive to repair. But $40 a month was was quite excessive. Actually, $417 a month was quite excessive, as you'll see in a minute. For some people, that may be a good rate. Uh, depending on what you pay now for the coverages, your, your history, your age, a whole bunch of other factors that go into underwriting and actuarials, picking what kind of your risk liability profile is, that could be a, a good rate for some people. For me, it was not. I went and quoted from Geico, a carrier I used to have that ends up costing a lot of extra money. The rates have been going up quite a bit. I did a quote with those same exact coverages. Theirs was $303 a month. Definitely a lot lower than Tesla's insurance, but still a little bit higher than I was anticipating. So I was starting to get a little worried at that point. I ended up doing a quote with my current carrier, which is Progressive. I had a pretty decent rate with them. For those of you that know me, I was a Geico employee for almost 20 years, and I even had Progressive insurance towards the last couple of years when a lot of things were changed with Geico. They were losing a lot of customers, a lot of employees. They were mismanaging some of the processes they had from moving themselves from an insurance company to an IT company that just happened to be in the insurance business. Uh, so I actually was a, a Geico employee uh, and had progressive insurance. Uh, very funny story, not, not uncommon. But I got the quote with them. One thing to keep in mind about their rate is I'm already rated for them for liability coverage. That's the risk profile I have as a driver, which... If you get into the weeds of it, I'm sure a lot of my former coworkers will tell me that's not actually accurate, but it is. They're just small changes. It doesn't really matter if you're driving, you know, like a Mazda 2 or if you're driving a Lamborghini Aventador. Your risk profile is, for the most part, generally the same, meaning your coverages for liability for damages you cause to other people's property or injuries that you cause them generally don't change by adding another vehicle. There are small changes. It's not exactly accurate, but the point is it's pretty much the same. So when you add a vehicle to a policy that you already have, 
in reality, you're only adding first party coverages. You're only adding the coverages that apply to the vehicle itself, like collision comprehensive, if you get rental, things along those lines. So keep that in mind. But the progressive quote came in at $94 a month, a third of Geico and less than a fourth of what Tesla's coverage was. Now, walking that back a little bit, I had just talked about how the liability coverage doesn't really apply when you have a, a second quote for a vehicle. What I did is I actually went back to the Tesla quote, removed all the first party coverages. So no collision, no comprehensive, just liability and med pay coverage. And that quote came in at around $120, $115. I forget exactly where, meaning that the coverage for the actual vehicle, the Tesla, the collision and comp coverage was about $300. So even considering that, it's still a third of what the Tesla quote was. So obviously I went with the current carrier I have. I'll probably make a video some other day underneath my financial investing uh, video log, talking a little bit more about insurance. If that's something anybody wants to know about, it's something that I've been in the business for. So I've been in the weeds. I know a lot about how it works. It's something that a lot of people don't quite understand, but that could be a topic in itself for 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, like I said, I went with the progressive coverage, got that sorted out, put it on the app. They let me schedule a date shortly thereafter. Uh, I'll be picking the vehicle up uh, Saturday, the 24th. So I'm really excited, obviously. A lot of the times there's questions on some Tesla forums on dates and whatnot. So just to recap, I had ordered the vehicle on the 1st of January. The very next day on the second, since the first is a holiday, the second, it got confirmed. It took 49 days to get a vehicle identification number. Once you get the VIN, it's kind of set. The delivery date's getting ready. You can finish everything. That's kind of the key point to get to. And then generally it's a few days after that. So in this case, 49 days to get the vehicle identification number and then six more days. So 55 total days from the order date to get the delivery. I'm really excited. Obviously, you know, it's been a while waiting for that to come here. I'll give you guys obviously a ton of updates once I get it, my first initial thoughts and uh, what that's going to be like, but I, I am pumped. So see you on the next one.